everyone, I'm Raga Olga de Silva, or totally out now, as you know me. It's 4 p.m. in London, 8.30 p.m. in India. A very warm welcome from the Other Side series of Speaking Minds, India's largest international speakers bureau. I'm the co-founder and director of Speaking Minds. As you know, we bring together thought leaders, motivational speakers, industry experts, performers, trainers. We also do both bespoke curated events for our corporate clients in India and around the world. In the current pandemic and stay at home environment that we are all currently in, we have continued to offer our clients support through a huge repository of talent that we manage. Now, today we have a topic that most of us shy away from. There are topics we feel comfortable talking about, and there are topics that cause us much stress, but we are unable to talk about for whatever reason, personal reasons. We are in lockdown, confined. For some of us, or for many of us, let's say, space is a luxury that we don't have. If our partners are with us, and I'm hoping that many of us are with our partners, we are now stuck with them 24 by seven. What seems romantic at one time now seems like, can seem like an irritation. Not for all, I'm sure. But what happens to romance? What happens to intimacy? What is happening during these times? We have with us, by popular demand, Seema Anand, mythologist, storyteller, an expert on women's narrative, author of The Arts of Seduction. If you recall, her talk on The Arts of Seduction has received over 9.5 million views on YouTube. Who better to talk about intimacy in relationships during lockdown than Seema Anand? Seema, welcome. Thank you, Raga. Welcome Hi. Back, Hello, good. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you. How are you? Uh oh, we've frozen. Hi, Seema. Sorry, I think there was a bit of a technical Hi. glitch. I could see your beautiful face, but I couldn't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. I, you'd frozen as well. Hi, Raga. Hi. It's good to be back. Um, it's interesting to pick the subject that you've picked today. I just want to know why are we so hot today? Is it London or is it because I'm in your presence or is it because of the... It's got to be me. The word. <laughs> it's got to be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, we've got a whole bunch of people who have joined in. Reema Sangvi, you know, our Hi, business partner at Speaking Minds says, hey, gorgeous, she says. <laughs> and I say, hey, gorgeous as well. Saurabh Dhanik says, hello, ma'am. Hello, Seema, ma'am, he says. And we've got a whole lot of questions for you, Seema. But the most important question for me to start off with is, what is intimacy? So um, I think the dictionary will give us a very basic meaning because I find that uh, these are English words and they belong within an extraordinarily tiny framework of meanings. OK, in, 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 in uh, the Western vocabulary, we have a very tiny framework of words that describe the idea of love. And in our background, you know, India has a culture in the world that has observed the idea of love as minutely as we have. We have observed and analyzed and categorized and studied it so closely. So for us, intimacy is an entirely different thing, I think. Um, intimacy is a physical relationship that you share with a in the Western um, precepts, it's generally a sexual relationship. Let's go one further. I think it is more about um, the, it's a sense of belonging. It is a sense of comfort with each other. It's a sense of pleasure in each other's company. And finally, it is that idea of being physically together, which is an extremely important part of um, any relationship um, between two people who, I, I, won't, I won't call them married people, but you know what I mean, two people who are together. So two people together could be partners together, right? People who love each other, people who feel safe, people who have respect for each other. So I'm going to ask you a question. Is intimacy physical? I'll I like the idea about um, feeling safe. Um, you just said, is it, um, uh, we were just discussing that a moment ago, isn't it? That um, this idea of feeling safe with each other, because it's only when you get to that feeling that when you're physically together, 
does that lead to pleasure? Otherwise, it's not really pleasure if it's not safe, if there's no safe space. So I think intimacy is an extremely important word and very, very, um, it should be very big in our minds when we actually think about our own relationships. So good. So when we talk about intimacy in relationships, we talk about being together, right? In the most vulnerable way that we can, whether it is, you know, emotionally vulnerable, whether it is sexually vulnerable, whatever. So that's when we feel safe. That's when we are intimate together. My question is, what is the difference between intimacy and sex? Well, I think it's literally that like you said if intimacy is about vulnerability it's about feeling safe sex if you take the word let's just take it as or at face value as it comes sure. to us um you know when the first thing that you think of when you think of the word sex or you think of the word intimacy intimacy is already a softer emotion it's it's something that makes you feel like you belong together like you belong with that person and it's something that is um it's almost it's a choice it's a desire it's a pleasure Sex is been stripped down to its bare bones. It's it's a cold hard word. It it needs something to make it uh, personal. So let's say one is personal, one is impersonal. There's an interesting comment that's come through uh, Simar on our uh, public page, which says from Aki Hito. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing it correctly. Intimacy doesn't need to be between partners. Intimacy can be the bonding, the connection between one spirit to another. Okay. True. Yeah. Some yeah. kind of bond, some kind of connection, yeah. something that links you. You know, it's funny you should say that because if you think about it within the India, within the ancient Hindu idea, sexuality and spirituality have always been connected. Sure. And to me, I know that a lot of people say, oh, you find all these um, images of um, sexual intimacy on the outside of temples, um, you know, ancient temples in India. I don't, and a lot of people say, oh, it's because, you know, this is the sort of thing that you have to leave outside before you step inside. I think that that idea of coming together physically was an analogy sure. of the union that was desired between the soul and the divine, that it would be as beautiful and pleasurable as that. So, sure. yeah, I agree. Intimacy can be the bond between um, spirit, one spirit, spirit and etc. But I think in this case, in today's um, session, we are generally focusing on the challenges that people are facing when it comes to. So we are looking at intimacy in the physical sense of the word, and certainly looking at the challenges that we're facing today. Are we not? Yeah. So Seema, we've been having you know various numerous conversations on this, right, over the last few weeks we're all in situations where we're the partners some of us in long-term relationships ships some of us have just met our partners and we are now confined together so tell me how do we cope I mean what is really happening out there you know this the funny thing is that um, actually this desire that is inside us and it is inside four of our beings some of us are more aware of it at the moment some of some of us have suppressed it some of us don't want to think it at the moment but we're we're all stuck to this point and we can't actually, we don't have a choice. Normally we have choices. We have a choice in the term, in terms of um, I can get out and do other things. I can meet with other people and so on and right now. And what I've discovered from all the questions and the emails that I've been receiving is that a lot of people are suffering hugely because this is something that's coming up when you're, when you're stuck at home or whether you're not, um, Either way, this is something that continues through your mind, desire and arousal and needs do not go away just because we have a pandemic at large. But we're being made to feel guilty about it. You know, it's it's funny because I've had questions like um, I had one person write into me and say, I'm a devout Hindu. Is it OK for me to have oral sex with my wife? And right now, it's almost as though there's somebody else who wrote in and said, is it a sin for me to masturbate in front of a mirror? Now, I mean, I, I just... Um, the, are you there? I'm sorry. I thought I, you froze yeah, for a yeah, second. Sure. So just yeah. repeat it. If we freeze, just repeat that, just in case people lose So it. as I said, you know, some, a lot of people wondering whether it's a, I, about whether it's... A, 
a sin to masturbate. He went so far as to say that it's a sin to masturbate in front of a mirror, which I was a little bit taken aback by because I haven't had a question like that before. But a lot of people who were actually written in saying, is this pandemic a punishment from God because we have been masturbating and this is against um, God's desires? And, you know, it's just really, it amazes me how much we have made the world believe that this is a bad thing, that this is sinful, that we actually have people coming forward with, with questions like this, actually thinking that they have brought this upon the world because they have um, gone out with a sexual act that has given them pleasure. Interesting. And it's just, I, I just think it's the day that we have brought upon the people a bit upon the world. And like I said, this is a, it's really amazing for me because, you know, recently I've just been collecting more um, material for the next set of um, writing. And I was with the Raginis, okay? So the music, uh, the rags and, you know, so there are, as you know, there are rags and then there are offshoots of those rags called the Raginis, which are smaller harmonies. And a lot of these are based on what we call the Sringhardras, okay? Or the erotic sentiment. Again, you use the word erotic, uh, immediately there's only one thing that comes to mind. But in ancient India, they believe that every single feeling, so you have three pillars of life. You have dharma, which is your um, interaction with society, so that's an outside thing. You have art, which is uh, your success in business, which is again an outside thing. And finally, you have karma. Karma is love for your partner. It is all feelings because all feelings arise from that one word, love, love for whatever. Yeah. But everything. So, you know, generally when you listen to musical um, harmonies in India, when you listen to the ragas and the raganis, we are supposed to think of it in terms of different ideas of love. And generally you hear about the heroine who is so happy because she's or the heroine who's so sad because they're separated. But actually, it's much more intense than that because everything, even hatred, was a permutation of love. Hatred, in the Western sense, is a separate emotion, not in the ancient Eastern sense. It was a permutation, and it's not immutable. You might hate somebody today. You did not hate them yesterday. You might not hate them tomorrow. So the, the idea of exploring um, intimacy was just so different in times gone by. Yeah. Uh, that we actually, you know, we were talking about the pandemic. We actually have instances of this that they talk about at all times. Like I said, we're, we're the only culture that's categorized the ideas of love so carefully, so minutely. So you have Raginis where, um, you know, the, 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 the Naika and the, the hero and the heroine are together and they're in love and everything is wonderful. You have the, the Raginis where the heroine is at home, the, the lover is away and she's so sad. But you also have the heroine who is with her lover and she's now bored with him because frankly, he's just been so loving to her and so nice to her and she's bored and she wants a change. We have Raganis which depict heroines which who are fed up with their lover because even though they're together, he is not a very nice guy. So there's this beautiful Ragini I was looking at, which I think is an offshoot of the Bhairav Rag, which okay. is where um, the story goes that, you know, she starts off in the morning. So it's sung in the morning and she does all her housework and she's so happy and it's a wonderful relationship. But the man is one of those people who is very, very jovial and happy and outgoing. And as the day goes by and she gets tired and she hasn't has a good, had a good day, but in the evening he comes to her and he's still so happy and loving and, you know, trying to flirt with her. And she thinks, why is he so happy? He's obviously been having an affair on the side with somebody else. And the anger that she feels that she wants to get away from him. There's another Ragini which talks about how she has the hero and the, the heroine have been together. But now she's bored of his love making. She wants to be with her girlfriends. She wants to get away. So we actually have this thing about understanding that just because you're together, things aren't always going to be fantastic. So this is what I want to come back to, uh, Seema. It's like the situation right now, as we know, is like, like I was saying, people are confined. Like we have at least larger houses in, in London, right? And some of us in India and other parts of the world also have large houses. But most of us are confined to a very small space. You have 
maybe you have the mother in law you know you have the in laws you have uh, your children around and you have each other so one problem is you have too much of togetherness how do you deal with that the other problem is that even if you want to be intimate you can't because you've got so many people around i heard one uh, couple who we know very well recently on another chat show talking about that they have because of the pandemic they've had the in-laws the mother-in-law the father-in-law the mother both sides of the family staying together they have a young child and they don't have space to be together and they're missing each other so that is also happening but my question to you today is about how do you manage too much of togetherness so um i think that it, it's actually both like you said there are people with very limited space and they have absolutely no time together for a lot of other people it's also this um there's an underlying fear of what is going on this uncertainty and insecurity we don't know whether we're going to survive even this whole pandemic yeah. and so for i mean i've been talking to friends and i'm talking about single one who says that she is so desperate to have sex at the moment that she just can't think of anything else and the other one says that she's so off it that if anybody comes near her she'll probably you know sort of scratch their eyes out yeah. she doesn't want to have anything yeah. to do with it and i realized that in all this i mean even talking from personal experience you know my children who are all grown up have suddenly come back home during this time and all i'm doing at the moment because i'm trying to keep everybody happy is i'm cooking a lot because this is the one thing that keeps everybody happy we can't do anything else but food um, and nice yeah. food and different food all the time and the the and i personally have re- realized like we were saying you know this whole idea it comes from within us this uh, this desire for intimacy and so on it's so much a part of us that it is that that needs to be settled you know if you can find the balance just to have that little bit of time with your partner it's amazing how much sukoon it will give you what is the word i'm looking for for sukoon it's amazing how much balance it will restore to your life it is amazing joy, joy, how much right. comfort no it's also the comfort it's like it will actually lay some of the the fears to rest but we don't have the time in to do practical, it practical. so I'm going, going back into the yeah. kama sutra yeah. i was actually going back into the kama sutra about this yeah. funnily enough because we keep saying that the kama sutra is the philosophy of life nobody really knows what the philosophy of life and this is why i brought this whole thing about the raganis you know that there are we have so minutely categorized the different feelings of love that this is a text that actually explains what you do in different beings um in different situations and one of the things that i discovered um in my reading again was the need for humor you know yeah. in the um in in the original um so they say that when the world is first created and brahma creates the men and then finally the women are created and he says then he says go out and now multiply and they have no idea what to do so they turn to shiva and shiva says oh my god now this is going to be a long thing i can't sit here and try and explain the whole thing to you but i'll tell you what start by tickling each other immediately your inhibitions will drop your desire will be aroused and everything else will come naturally and it's a it's a an instance it's a little episode i really find delightful because in the kama sutra it constantly says that sex is a very tiny part of what actually happens the build up to it is what we call intimacy or joy and it's got to be joyous and again in that whole sure. thing it's about um creating a, a a platform of happiness to make the other person feel happy feel good so one of the things that i have been recommending to people who've come to me is actually go out onto youtube or even onto um your television together watch as many comedy programs as you can together the idea is to change your mood just slightly it's amazing because to be able to laugh together is to have a connection yeah. sure Super. even on of goodness precious me yeah that's one thing your the idea of humor will bring you so much um it's like just creating a little tiny cocoon for yourself it's just a shared moment 
tell each other bad jokes what we call dad jokes you know <laughs> the really bad jokes which my my husband who is now um 68 he tells really bad jokes you know <laughs> we call them particularly dad jokes because we, we think that <laughs> <laughs> we heard <laughs> but, but you know the thing is that this is the time when i when we actually need that because it makes me feel like things are okay it it kind of sure. brings us back closer together again Sure. The other thing, number two, let me go through a couple of these things and then ask me a few questions after that. Yeah. The second thing that the Kama Sutra says is the idea of having shared words. When you cannot be intimate with each other, you have little words that you um, share with each other. What they call the the secret language of the lovers. Things that just trigger a memory in your head, take you back to a particular point. you may not be able to do that at that point but it creates such a bond they say in modern psychology they say that couples who have more words for nookie you know for intimacy or for sex between each other actually have healthier sex lives they have healthier relationships because it's like a little inside joke it's a space that only the two of you share it gives you so much support it just kind of comforts the soul a little bit to be able to go there it's quite amazing and the third thing which is the simplest thing of all but we don't generally do it just hold hands oh just hold hands when nothing else is possible and not just quick sort of grab and this thing but actually give yourself the time to hold hands time it give it one minute one minute is a long time you know in certain um, spaces just hold hands give yourself enough time to just feel the other person's skin on your skin bare flesh to bare flesh it is incredibly comforting sima this is amazing because this is what i was talking about right so we're talking about little secrets and little pleasures that we yeah. can get when there are there is conflict happening around us right uncertainty i mean i've got see a child crying in the background and 24 by 7 i have to manage other things in my life which i wasn't managing i came home from work typically or my husband was away from work or my partner was away at work or i was away at work and i came back in the evening and i had that little time together right for some reason those things are getting lost right now and we know the reasons right so how do we while this all sounds fantastic and it's great tips sima but practically how do we incorporate i would love to hold hands with my partner i'd love to have a secret language with my partner which brings back memories but how do you manage when you have certain things out of your control a child's crying constantly behind wants your attention how do you bring intimacy and sex into that well like i said you know particularly at that point when you're that frustrated we're talking about holding hands for maybe a minute at a time it's maybe the other things just can't be done right now but trust me at that point if you can get even an arm around the shoulder a hand even a finger you know in the in the kamsa sutra we have this whole chapter which is a very exciting chapter called the art of the the curved finger which is uh, it has a whole different meaning to it right now the art of the curved finger is very different it's literally about yeah linking a curved finger even for a moment your child is crying it is something that you can do you still can do that one of the Point. other thing you know um i i just find that it is, you can't do it 24 by 7 you cannot have um you cannot have your partner at whatever time you need them but you need to feel that you could have them if that was the case you need to feel that they're there at whatever point your crying child stops crying or that moment comes that you have them at that point it's sure. just you know it's an amazing thing but it's it's just about how you can um calm your mind and have, keep your mind focused it's just about making sure that that's because it is about the channels in your mind it is all about how you actually think this through because we are getting frustrated things sure. are pretty bad at the moment and right. we are speaking from a, mo- a point of privilege in a way we are right. not in the really really bad places there are people with far greater difficulties sure so i am at this point talking to people who 
have the privilege of at least knowing that they have their partner over there with them. Sure. But knowing that is not enough. You need to be able to know that you have them and their potential intimacy if suddenly the opportunity should present itself. And I think that that's sure. the really important thing, just to be able to get to that point. Sure. Let me read some of the comments that are coming through, Seema. Okay, and sorry. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful comments. So, sorry, sorry. So Rupa uh, Lus- Lutzenberger, who we know very well from the Indian Women in London, she says, I absolutely agree. Memories, holding hands, stroking, all these make our intimacy beautiful. You need to slow down in life to have these. Totally agree. Lockdown is giving us more of these, she says. And uh, Sartaj uh, Chaudhary says, love the Paki. Dr. Anand. Saurabh Dhanik says, ma'am, you both are very knowledgeable people. I'm really liking the session. You know, that's my, this is my first one. Rajiv Trivedi says, Seema, ma'am, you look beautiful. Okay, so there are lots of comments coming through. And let's, somebody is asking, and this is something that you and I discussed, Seema, is about this whole emotional infidelity. At this moment, more so, we, you and I also discussed about how apparently people are having more, you know, online flings. Sexting. And I'm like... Sexting and flings, like we said, there are romances happening which are blossoming online. I mean, can you, can you tell us more about this? Why are we still looking out? Why are we still seeking out? Is it because it's 24 by 7 with our partners? Shouldn't it bring us closer now? No, I think, Raga, that's actually not uh, something that we could do. You know, we've always said, we when we talk about this in normal times, we always say that human beings were never meant to be completely monogamous. Most of us understand that that is the rules of society and we stay monogamous. It doesn't mean that in our minds, you know, we do, we fantasize, we think about other people. And it's interesting because, you, believe it or not, we have a lot of ancient myths in, in the Hindu mythology where you have a lot of women who are punished by their husbands for thinking about another man because that is considered a sin even. You know, what we're saying right now, in those days, they didn't have um, text messages. So the the idea of thinking about somebody, fantasizing about somebody, or even listening to somebody saying nice things to you and feeling happy. And the woman is then told, we have the story of Ahalya, we have various stories like that, that for imagining, well, in Ahalya's case, of course, somebody else um, um, rapes her. But in the case of uh, another uh, heroine, like uh, Renuka, who sees a young man walking along by the river and she thinks, oh, he's good looking. And her husband says, you have been unfaithful to me in your mind. And so she's punished and she's actually killed for that. He gets his son to behead the mother because she has been unfaithful. So these stories have come up. And I have a story that we, we tell about how Kamdev reiterates a lot of the, because this is with the rise of patriarchy that we start to think that this is so bad, this is so bad. And we start to put down um, limits on the mind as well, on fantasy. And Kamde reiterates some of the ancient philosophies, which says that there are three types of sin. There's the sin in the mind, for which you say a certain set of prayers and you're okay. There is the sin of voicing something by saying something. So you have thought it and said it, but you haven't done anything. So, He says that these are all sins and there is a way of redeeming yourself from each of these so-called sins. So is it something that we should still be looking at as so bad? When we are in lockdown, um, we still have fantasies. Your partner may not feel like sex at this point, but you might feel like it. To force your partner at this point is the worst thing that you can do. We don't want to do that. So for that person, for that person who really needs to de-stress, who needs a release, what do they do? So is it good or bad? Is it right or wrong? Is there some way of judging this? If they think, if they sext, you know, the sex texting, if they have online affairs where they're doing certain things, is it as good or bad as watching porn? Is watching porn a sin? Because you're still getting off on it and fantasizing about it. So is the is the present day online affairs, um, is it the same as, is it a slightly less aggressive form of porn? What is it? It's a, it's a very new phenomenon at the moment, but 
it isn't really when you think about it, because in times gone by as well, like I said, with this whole idea of the secret language of the lovers, this is we had stories about how people would carry on entire love affairs, you know, by literally meeting in public places. And there would be different ways of touching your ear that would send one message, different ways of doing this, which would send another message and so on. Different ways of giving fun that would send love messages to each other. Is there a huge difference between the two? And is it a really bad thing to be sexting? And for the partner who is not doing it, so let's say my partner is doing it for me, yeah. I don't want sex at this point. This is driving me crazy. This whole situation is is terrible. What can I do? What is what should my reaction be at this point? Um, if my partner is doing this to de-stress, because at the end of the day, my partner is not actually going out to have a physical affair. But do I call this an affair? I don't yeah. know. I in different spaces, you think of it in different ways. And at this point in time, I'm seriously wondering whether this is one way of keeping your sanity intact. So sexting, you're saying, is all right. If if that's bringing them pleasure. I don't know. I mean, there's no answers. I know. Right? Like I said, there are no answers, absolutely yeah. no answers, because we we say that this is a human instinct, so again, like I said, we have stories in our Hindu mythology which say this is a human instinct. We say that people think it; they may not actually be as bad as to go out and actually have that affair, but they think it, they want to talk about it, they want to fantasize. But see, this is what uh, Dr. Simi said earlier. So emotional infidelity, does it mean it's emotional infidelity? Right. So that's, that's the question we ask. And does it matter as long as with your partner? Because we all fantasize. So, like I said, I think that it is a human instinct. Um, I think that in an ideal world, one would not be desirous of going anywhere else. But what happens if you do? And if it is just for this time, if this is part of the pandemic, it is almost like a tonic during the pandemic. Is this something that we say, okay, it happened, we got past a problem? Because yeah. if that is kept inside you, it can manifest in so many other ways. I don't want to be the one that says yeah. this is fine, frankly. Yeah, But sure. I know a lot of people at the moment who are going through phone, phone affairs, okay? Sure. It's a phone affair going on. And I had one woman say to me that actually she's now bored of it, but the guy that she's with who is you know, he's so into it, but, and he's obviously getting off on it and he has the same old routine. And she says it's getting so boring now that yeah. she actually tidies her cupboards while she's doing it. <laughs> and there was a slightly, yeah. And then she said that the other day, uh, the cupboard door creaked and he said, excuse me, are you doing something else while I'm making love to you? And it was really quite funny. <laughs> But on the other side, there are people who, um, so there's this gay, uh, young boys actually in India. And one of them says that he's actually, he, his family doesn't know that he's out yet. And it's a small house and he can't even, let alone see his partner, he can't even speak to him. They can only message each other. Wow. So he's really, really caught in. So I think just being able to talk to somebody at the moment could be, a huge release of tension and India as you know um, you can't even get out for, or yeah, exercise. for, for an exercise so you're, you're like completely what? stuck in so no, I agree but you know Seema I mean in my experience okay whatever little experience I have people are different right there are some of us who will go out anyway regardless of a lockdown or not so finding ex-partners sexting having online affairs is something that we don't even some I'm thinking we as in some mm -hmm. of us don't even bother about there's some of us who are very loyal no matter what so I mean mm -hmm. I think the lockdown hasn't really changed anything it is the kind of personalities that we individually have I would maybe maybe in some cases it has changed a person and they've gone out and sought but you know we are not here to judge right we're just saying hey it's if it feels right for you you do it. If it doesn't feel right for you, don't do it. But, you know, there's something that someone... Uh, so I hope Shrijit Kutan Raj, we have uh, answered your questions. Uh, Joy Lewis says some points of, on masturbation. I'm going to give you three, four comments and then uh, because we don't have that much time. So Joy Lewis says, please share some points on masturbation. Neeraj Trivani says, what's your opinion on texting an ex-partner during lockdown? And that's exciting. 
So I think a says, lot. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Rupa says, is it possible to feel incomplete even if you have a completely healthy relationship with your partner, but yearning for more? What is your opinion on this? How let me do just we tackle it. Huh? So let's let just me just do this. It's a big, big question. So, let's so first when it comes it. to masturbation, in incompletely short, I will say that you know it is not sinful. It is a release that most people require. And it is actually the healthiest form of release rather than going off and watching violent porn to try and come on it or whatever. Oh. It's probably the healthiest form of release. Okay. Um, if you feel that you need to mas- masturbate, it is not a bad thing to do. This is from a medical point of view. Okay. Sure. Or even from a psychological point of view. We used to be told in the days gone by, if you masturbate, it's evil, it's bad. You'll go blind if you masturbate. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the Christian texts said that. Um, it, it's not... Well, they did. <laughs> I heard this I heard this stand-up comedian the other day saying this, um, this white guy. Um, and he said, he said, you know, as a growing up, as a Catholic growing up, my mother would constantly say to me, if you masturbate, you'll go blind. And he said, I have to tell you that I recently took her for a cat. Um, <laughs> what does that tell you about my mother? But um, on a serious note, um, we 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 have a lot of young people who come to us saying um, that they feel very guilty about masturbating. Sure. Masturbation is so many different types. You can either have it as somebody who's trying to um, um, penetrate and masturbate, or, you know, as, as a woman, sorry. Women who do it without penetration, men who will do it in a certain way. So long as you are not, and I stress this, so long as you're not bringing harm either to yourself or to somebody else, masturbation in itself is not a bad thing okay okay um too much of it too much of anything is a bad thing but so long as you do not bring yourself harm or um bring anybody else harm um at that point i know i was ready to answer a few questions and then you went past okay. them what is the second thing that we so what about? is your uh, opinion on texting an ex-partner so a lot of people are actually texting ex-partners. You know, there's always been a standing thing saying that ex-lovers make the best friends. Okay. Um, the the Kama Sutra itself says that the comfort factor that you have old partners, it says that the best sex is always with people who ha- that you have been together with for a long time. So it's not instant arousal. It takes a long time to get there. But it's far better because there is a comfort factor. And as we said earlier, security is a huge factor in the build-up to eventually joyousness. So I think a lot of people are going back to ex-partners, either because they don't have anybody in their life at the moment. That can be one reason. The other being that there is this need. At the moment, we have... Similar okay. frozen in our normal lives where we have so much stimulation. Sure. Tell me when I come back. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. You're back. I'm back. Yeah. So I was saying at the moment we have absolutely no stimulation in our lives, no other stimulation. For us all who have led such incredibly stimulating lives, we're out, we're, you know, we're seeing people, we're going to meetings, we're we're doing this, we're doing that. Even just the simplest task of going down to Starbucks to get yourself a coffee, which has its own level of you meet the person behind the counter they smile at you they say what can i get you you say this is what i'd like you say thank you every little tiny bit of stimulation has been taken away from us this is an escape format a lot of people are going back to it i think these are unusual circumstances it is not it's not for us to judge at the moment i think that we're all looking for ways of survival it is a survival instinct but yes, there is this, I think it's basically ex-partners. I'm sure it's either because you don't have anybody right now or there's a huge comfort attached to it. Sure. So there's Seema, I'm going to, so Seema, I'm going to read. That you we, have. We've got, we've run way past our time, but that's okay. It's Rupa's, a great conversation. Let's oh shit, keep on. sorry. We, no, no, that's okay. We, let's keep on, okay? There's Rupa's. Is it possible to feel, there's lots of, lots of questions, okay, by the way. So I want to be able to, for us to answer all of them. And yes, just to very quickly say about Rupa's is that, yes, it is completely okay to feel incomplete 
because the soul, we have this weird idea in our heads that we have a soulmate. The soul is too big. One person cannot be your soulmate. In the normal average way of life, you would have so many different people that you would interact with to feed your soul, to nurture your soul. At the moment, your soul is not being nourished like it should be. So yes, it is a very empty feeling and we are all suffering with that. So is there anything we can do to tackle that? Literally, like I said, at the moment, it is about survival. So the soul is a long lasting thing. It ain't going no place. It is at the moment feeling um, feeling a little bit hemmed in and a little bit sad and empty. You know, like I said, weirdly enough, out of all the things that I suggested, the thing that will actually make you happiest is that little bit of humor. Try it. Just try it for a brief while. Either just listen to something funny, you know, plug into your phone, listen to something funny on the YouTube, but actually share some amusing, something humorous with your partner. I just want to say that, you know, again, back to the Kama Sutra, one of the things that they always say is that when um, you're trying to seduce your partner, so this is pre-sex, you know, when you've just gotten together, the idea was to bring yourself to a point of relaxation. And it was for the, the man, in this case, to bring the woman, um, to sh- help her shed her inhibitions, to make her forget about all the other things, etc. And you know what they recommended doing? They recommend telling her gossipy stories. They say share gossip. <laughs> Anything that will kind of make her go, no way. And actually kind of forget what else she's thinking of and want to interact. Short spurts of gossip. And funny things are brilliant. They do, they do create a connection. Top Excellent. tip from Kam Delika. Super, 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 super tip. I do that all the time. Ninda I make sure. <laughs> I remember I, I bring in a lot of gossip from everywhere and I make sure I tell my partner. And humor. <laughs> you know, today I shared with you, we went for an eight kilometer walk and I made my very, very foreign Western partner sing a Hindi song. Tere mast, mast <laughs> <laughs> I better sing Tere Mast Mast Do I mean, like, how weird is that? But, you know, but really, these are things that are bringing us closer, Seema. You know, I, and so I really agree with you and I understand exactly what you're saying. We have to somehow find that magic for ourselves. Nobody is going to come and give us a magic potion, right, to make our relationships work or help us become intimate. Now, one question from Simi, which is actually coming, you know, it just follows through from what Rupa was saying. Is are we monogamous, uh, monogamy or polygamy, which we talk about quite a bit? So, who are we as people? So, I don't think that we can ever um, define it one way or another. There's no hard and fast rules. We've been told incessantly from the start of time in psychology that um, we cannot be monogamous, that human beings are not made to be monogamous. However, we live within a society that dem- demands monogamy at least from a certain uh, sector of people. So you either choose to live within that society or you choose to live outside of it. I personally think that there's a lot to be said for monogamy, but it depends on how you define monogamy. So I think that the mind should, I mean, the mind is vaster than the universe and the mind does and should have the right to explore other fantasies because if it cannot, it will actually die of boredom and you are the most unexciting person for your own partner. Sure. Okay. So I think mentally we should fantasy. I think it's extremely important. Um, and I think that that is not a place for, uh, and certainly that is not to be judged. I, according to me, I could be wrong in what I'm saying, but we believe, I believe that even to attain moksha, even to attain nirvana, you have to want. You you know, people talk about sacrificing everything, going and, and then giving yourself over to God. Hey, you can't even get to moksha without, want, without having a passion for it because it's not easy to get to. Your arousal, your desire, your passion has to stay alive if you are going to stay alive. Sure. And much as we would love to think this, one person 
cannot satisfy all those nerve endings of passion. They cannot. You cannot do it for anybody else and they cannot do it for you. So I think that monogamy is a definition that we put on physical relationships. This is, till now, that's how we've defined monogamy. Fair enough. Um, keep to that physical distance. And social distancing is a good thing these days anyway. So monogamy of the mind, I think that you should let the mind have its fantasies because you need to keep your own passion alive just to keep yourself alive. Sure. So you're saying that monogamy in relationships is important. What happens behind in your mind? It doesn't matter. Right? As long as it keeps no, your I think it's what primary you... relationship active. Well, so it's not something you can control. Because if you think yeah, about sure. it, every time you look at your favorite film star, we fantasize and we say, it's okay to fantasize about George Clooney. But if there is somebody that you have met personally, you suddenly face about that person, that's all wrong. There yeah, has yeah, to understand. be, uh, you know, I mean, why do we suddenly make that distinction for ourselves? So I think that sure. we do need that little bit of fantasy, even to keep ourselves going for our partners. Sure. Uh, Seema, I've got lots of questions and some very interesting questions. And I think we should try and wind it in the next 10 minutes. So we'll keep it quick, short. Okay. Oh, I don't know which one to take, but let's talk about Payal Kapoor Nair. Uh, if you know Payal, Payal was Payal acted in a, a movie called Chapak with okay. uh, with Deepika Padukone, very prominent role. And uh, so she says she's a huge fan of yours, by the way. So she says oh, social you, distancing Payal. will be the new normal, maybe. She says social distancing will be the new normal, maybe after the lockdown is eased. Do you think then affairs will come down because of the fear? Certainly, initially, we will go back to our normal lives as we knew them, where people will be together. And then things in a couple of years time, like we did with all the other pandemics before this, we will forget about it eventually. But for the time being, yes, I think that uh, physical affairs, physical uh, adultery will come down. So interesting. So we're saying that yeah, there is... There is... Sorry, so I lost you there, Seema. Sorry, not the emotional or mental adultery, but certainly the physical adultery, I think. Simply because, like you said, social distancing will be the new norm for a while. Uh, Sanjay uh, Medureta, hello and hi. I'm glad you're here, my friend. Fantastic uh, to see you online. Love you too, Payal Kapoor Nair. Uh, I hope that answered your question well. I have a very interesting question from uh, Max Peters, uh, Seema, for you. What about partners who are perfect in every sense? but they're not having sex or there's zero intimacy between them? Good question. So th that, I guess, is just depends on where they are with each other. You see, there could be so many different reasons for partners to not have intimacy between them. But I always remember a line from a film. I think it was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And I think it's somebody telling Elizabeth Taylor that, when a marriage is on the rocks, the rocks are generally in the bed. Uh, I think Seema, can, that you, can you repeat that? You went, you froze for a bit. Please, sorry, can you repeat sorry, that? Sorry, I, I was saying that there's this line from Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I think it's from A Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, where it says that if the rocks are generally in the bed. Okay, so I think think that two people have decided that mutually, if they have decided that they not want any physical contact, that is a decision that they have both made. But it is seldom the case that this is a decision that has come from both people. It's seldom something that both people want. So I think that if there are two people together who are, who are wonderful for each other and they have chosen not to have any kind of physical contact, then it is a choice that they have made. And if they haven't, I think that um, they need to deal with. And sometimes, Seema, it can be temporary, right? Sometimes temporarily you go away from each other physically or, you know, and then you always come back, right? These are temporary things that happen, in, especially in long-term relationships, right? 
it can happen that you go away from each other but in the life that we've always lived till now yeah. we've had choices you know we've had this thing of uh, the man saying well i have my work to go to i have my golf to go to i have my friends to go to the woman saying i have my kitties there's been w- parties there's been ways of keeping yourself occupied sure. so that there wasn't the need to come back if you didn't want to this situation has changed that drastically it is forcing us to look at our relationships again and see whether we want to come back together again and in this case i always find that you know when people come and ask me about this i always say that we have a choice you know we can reverse any situation any situation right. you can reverse it but it's not easy for most people the moment they say oh but she won't listen or he won't listen it's not about that if you really want something to change it's about putting a hell of a lot of effort into it always reminds me you know talking about this thing about when there is separation and you come back there's a wonderful story that we tell from our mythology about this woman who goes to a witch doctor and she says give me a love potion to give me a love potion because my husband and I used to be so close and then he went off to the wars and he's come back and now he's so distant and he won't touch me and I want him back give me a potion so the the female says to her just look okay, I'll make you a potion but I need one ingredient which I don't have which you'll have to get for me i need a hair from the mustache of a lion but it has to be freshly plucked so this woman goes off to get it and they they show her journey she goes and lives in the forest she discovers where the lions are she she gets close to one and it takes months for her to get close enough where the lion trusts her sits next to her and one day the lion finally after about 2 years trusts her so much that he goes to sleep with his head near her lap and she plucks that hair and she runs back to the old witch doctor and she says look i've got it i've got it here now make me the potion and she says what the amount of effort and patience you put into that that's your potion that's your magic potion that's what you need the magic to actually change your relationship you know it is so simple in a way potion. isn't it it is so simple and it is it not it is simple. literally that but yeah. none of us actually have the ability to because we carry so much love. no but he said this she said this, they did this i can't yeah i always think yeah. sorry i know we're running out of time but i really want no, no, people no, please, to go please. away with this one thought you know we talk yeah. about being stuck with your partner now i want you to remember dropadi dropadi was married to five men okay she had this thing about and they had separated the times in such a way that she had to be with each brother at a time and during that one year the other brothers could not um come in or disturb them in any way now when she lives in the palaces she's fine because they each have their own palace she lives with each brother they go off in the day they do their job they've got other wives she's got other things to do then she ends up in the forest for 12 years with all five them together okay you're talking about ex partners you're talking about present lovers you're talking about people that you love and you don't love you're talking about people who turn you on and don't turn you on she's got all five of them with her and she is alone with them and what is very interesting is that we are not told that the the this thing has to be that you know this she's with one partner yes she is still with one brother for one year at a time but you know what she is given when she is when she goes off into the forest what is the special little gift that she is given she is given an akshapatram a pot which will always be full of food because they say how will you feed these five guys nobody thinks what is she going through what is her mental and emotional state how will she deal with being with her ex lover her present lover it's all very well to say that you take a purifying bath and now you're with the next brother damn it you're the woman can you forget the relationship that you had was this one a better lover this one isn't all of those things can you imagine i mean every uh, time i think of what we are going through you think of that that yeah. is a story that encapsulates our entire life totally totally agree with you sima we've got so many questions i don't know whether we have the time but there's a very interesting question that's the last question guys i will take because we're really running out of time and i'm afraid that 
Facebook will uh, turn, it, turn us off. So Shrichit says again, he says, if my girlfriend wishes to have sex with another guy, and I'm kind of okay with that since it's a freedom of choice, then I want to know what's running in my mind. So I'm not sure whether you mean, Shrijit, what's running in your mind or what's running in her mind. So Seema, do you want to answer that question whether what's running in... He wants... Yeah, in, in his, his mind, mind kind of thing. I'm thinking that's what he's trying to say. No, or... Yeah. I think... I think it's something that he will have to answer. And actually, I think it's a very, very good question. But I really think that if you want to know what's either motivating you to think that or allowing you to have those feelings that you can let her go, I would like you to think it through very, very carefully. Not just because it will be good for you to understand what's motivating you to behave like that. Because it's not just what happens at that time. It's also about what are the repercussions of this in time to come. I have a lot of friends who have open relationships who now say five years on that we were okay with it then, but today the, that my partner might want to be with somebody else, it kills me. It, it gives me so much pain. I can't think straight. So Shrijit has, uh, sorry, has uh, clarified that for us. He's talking about from a society's point of view. He says, what will society think? So his girlfriend wants to be with someone else. He's okay with that. But what will society think is what he's thinking. Does well, it matter? Society is always going to, if it becomes known, if it becomes public, I always say there's, not, there's no reason to actually announce everything out of sphere. I know that we have social media, but really there's no need to tell everybody about certain things that go on inside your life. Um, if you are prepared to live with an open relationship, most people eventually within your circle of friends will understand that that is the case. But as I said, this is the sort of thing that always has a slightly longer term repercussion. It's never that difficult at the start, but I would like you just to put it Seema, you mean to repeat. You mean to repeat that. Well-balanced person. So I said that you seem to be a very balanced, functional person. For yourself, I would like you to take the time to actually think it through. Understand what is motivating you, okay? And understand what will be your reaction a little bit further down the line. Because sure. a lot of people who we know who have tried this in the past, it's been fine for a while things change. I know several people who are like, we're warriors. We love it. You know, I want my wife to tell me about her past relationships. I want my wife, my girlfriend to tell me what she's doing. Um, at some point, because there are two of you involved in this, at some point, emotions change. You need to understand better for yourself. Sure. You know, he's, he's been commenting as you've been speaking, Seema. Fantastic answer. He's saying, I'm not worried about this. So he's personally not worried about it. And he's saying, since, since it's my private opinion, I want people to know it's not a weird case. You know, obviously people judge mm -hmm. and say it is so weird sure. for someone to allow his girlfriend to be with someone else and he's okay. So so that's, so that's he's saying, thanks a ton for taking up this ma'am. Loads of love from this fanboy. Now, there are lots of questions, Seema, and I really don't know. I mean, we can go on and on. I'd love to go on and on. Maybe we can have a, a session two on that. But there is somebody who's saying, I want to take this up. Any Shweta Vagadia says, any book suggestions from Seema Ma'am? Not from me. <laughs> uh, books on what? Yeah, uh, Shweta, do you want to talk about, uh, do you want to tell us quickly what book suggestions on what subjects you're looking at? But in the meantime, I'm just going to say, Seema, what a fantastic session. I haven't been answered, you, you haven't answered my questions yet. Uh, what's that? Most important thing. I see a lot of my friends talking about this when I call up India, that they are in this confined space. They are with their partners, wives typically, or wives with their spouses, 24 by 7. They don't have time. They're both working from home. They have children. They have chores. So much is happening, right, in our lives. How do they keep their intimacy alive? And I know you gave some tips on humor. You said, let's hold hands. But yes. Raga, it is, it, I mean, sure, you know, yes, there is maybe we're talking about the actual having sex. 
um, which may not be entirely possible at all. But there's no reason why you cannot keep your intimacy alive by letting the other person know that that desire for them is very much alive. You have to let people know. And like I said, this is a very gentle form of doing it. Holding hands, you will find that at a time like this, when everything else is not available to you, how terribly exciting that one little thing can be. Just the pressure of somebody's hand, just the feel of somebody's flesh against your flesh. You know that whole skin to skin feeling? Yeah. Trust me. It is at the moment, it, I know this is the only thing we can do right now, but it's a very, very, um, it's a very special way of getting past that. Hand around the shoulders. That's something we can always do. Beautiful. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to uh, come back to what Shweta said. So that book she was asking for any book suggestion, she's asked on perfuming body. Oh, on perfuming the body. Sorry, Shweta, but you know, it's amazing how little has been written about it. There are several old texts from Mughal times, uh, either in Persian or in Sanskrit, which haven't really been, um, as far as I know, not most of them have not been translated. You will just be able to find little bits and pieces. Your best bet is to Google articles on perfuming the body. That's your literally your best bet at the moment. Um, somebody presented me with a book called Perfume, which is an old book. Oh, I love that book. Uh, it was absolutely, oh my God, it was it was so frightening oh, and weird and yeah. horrible. Yeah. But it was oh not about, God. it wasn't about what Shweta is asking. It's um, just about the idea of the the, the perfume of your body. Um, but yeah, if you're into strange and uh, books that can make you feel uncomfortable, perfume is an interesting book to read. It is, it is indeed. It's one of my most favorite books, Haunting Dark. <laughs> it leaves you... There are so many questions. You know, Seema, I want to go on and on. I think we should do an, a part two. I mean, this is amazing. Rupa loves it. Uh, Max Peter says, Payal Kapoor Nair, thanks for asking this. You know, Payal is one of your like, really big fans, uh, Seema, I must say. And her movies, her, her, so the, the character she plays, she's, it's amazing. So I'm glad we have her here. And there's so many. And I, uh, Chintala Akshay says, Follow Seema Anand on YouTube. Wonderful videos of her available. I agree with you, Chintala. She's got an amazing YouTube channel full of exciting and interesting stories from mythology. Please watch it. Please watch it. And uh, Ayushri says, we are now looking forward for your next session. It's been such an amazing time with you guys. Thank you so much. Rupa says, thank you both so much for your lovely session. Max says, I was thinking about the murderer when she asked about perfuming. So there's lots and lots and lots of com conversation and comments, Seema. I, 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 I'm thinking that I think we should have our intimacy and relationships in lockdown part two. This is very exciting. Chitra Nair says, thank you for the wonderful session. I feel hopeful, as I said last time also after your talk. You know, when I talk to you, I always feel that there is hope for people. You know, there's always these things that we get stuck on. You know, is, it, is intimacy possible? Can we, you know, a lot of people have come back to me and asked me this question, like what happens after the lockdown is released? You know, it's, you know, I said this to you, Seema, I think two days ago, I said, like someone said that I don't want to see my spouse for the next 20 years again. I mean, these conversations are happening and for real, you know, but it's not happening with me. So it's not me. <laughs> but a lot of us are coming closer. A lot of us are actually drifting apart. And somehow I think your tips that you've given, I Today, I feel that simple things like holding hands, sending special messages to each other, remembering the, those holding times. The finger. finger, I love that. In fact, I'm going to use this as a tag for Seema Anand. Come on, guys. Anybody can take a photo <laughs> of this. No, seriously, let's take a photo of this and put it up on these, feed, on these feeds. I'd love to see any one of you watching, put a photo of this for Seema and I and, and for your partners and that you believe the in The art love. of the curved finger. The art of the curved finger. This is about intimacy in relationships during lockdown. Let's make this big Seema Anand. I love it. <laughs> so thank you, Seema. Is there anything you want to say as we leave? Or are you happy with what you've said? No, just to say that, you know, it is possibly the most difficult time uh, with the amount of pressure that it's being. 
that's it's putting on our relationships um, because right now we are having to be everything for our partners and they're having to be everything for us it's not humanly possible but we're expecting them to be almost like god you know it's like this is what you want god to be everything suddenly you want your partner who is very very human to to be everything for you um just try and remember just try and keep that in your mind that we are all human and this time will pass you know we have uh, the japanese have this thing about repairing cracks with a bit of gold and then they say yes. that when you repair something with a bit of gold it's even more precious so right now when everything seems like it's falling apart you get that one moment with your partner one minute two minutes of holding hands just to remind yourself that you have each other to look after you you have each other to look after yourselves that you have somebody um repair the cracks right now with you know this is it's a good time to think of this as a good thing um super fantastic because <laughs> we will be coming out of it and i think asima whether we come out of it soon or not what you have allowed us to believe in is that intimacy and the magic can remain in relationships if we want to it's all here right if we want it and thank you for it's that. all here and according to the kama sutra it's all about joyousness okay it's all so, about being happy so and magic and pleasure whatever makes and I, you happy and i can tell you i've been with my magic partner. yeah yeah i've been with my partner for 13 years we work together we run a business together we live together 24 by 7 this lockdown wow. has been with me for 13 years and i have had the most pleasurable joyous relationship <laughs> no and you know that seema and sometimes it goes away and it's okay sometimes it's not there the intimacy is not there and it's okay it always comes back nobody's going away you know and absolutely keep rewiring ourselves you, like i and, i love one thing that you said sima tonight most of the thing everything i love about you but there's one thing that you said that remain with me that you have to work at it it is not easy nobody else from the outside is going to come and tell you this is the magic potion like i shared earlier we have to make it work we have to nurture it we have to cherish it it is beautiful right magic only remains because we believe in it So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you have to work at it. And like I said, actually the you know use the things from the Kama Sutra because it's amazing. Here is a book that says that the actual sex part of it, the positions as people think, is just the tiniest part. It's all the rest of the things that build up to it. Like you said, it's magic. It's learn how to paint each other, do drawings of each other. It's am- when fantastic. Amazing how much Okay. Up we go. Seema, next time we discuss all the 64 skills of the Kama Sutra let's and how they that. can be let's applied right now. How's that? Done. Let's do that. And in the meantime, for those who are watching us, please know that tomorrow Seema and I are going to do a very interesting banter on intimacy and relationships in lockdown on Seema's Instagram which is Seema Anand Storytelling. Please follow us there. 8:30 p.m. india time 4 p.m. london and let's get together please come up with any any kind of questions that you have seema will be happy to answer as always and thank you everybody thank you very much have a very good evening good night and seema anand you are the most beautiful person i've met i am not saying this to my partner <laughs> but thank you very much <laughs> you're <just> blushing <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for your time <laughs>